Here we go. Okay, I officially started the recording, so now we have to be official and stuff. Uh, so finally, me and Ethan have had time to uh, cast the uh, Season 4 Demo Boil Finals between uh, a Sad Panda and Petros. And I'm going to resume the game in 3, 2, 1, now. Here we go. Do you want to go over a Sad Panda's team, Ethan? Uh, That's yeah. the dwarf's stat. They're dwarves, and they're awful. Uh-huh. Um, uh, guard on basically everyone. There's four dudes that don't have guard. The two runners and the two troll slayers. <laughs> Fuck this team! One runner has dodge, one runner has kick off return and tackle. Uh, every dude on the team has block because they're dwarves. And they got some mighty blow and two tackles and uh, they're dwarves. So basically, we hate them already. Uh, Petra's lovely team, on the other hand, the, the Skaven team, have gutter runners with dodge, wrestle, strip ball. So, uh, uh, stealing the ball type of guy. Uh, dodge, block, sidestep. Dodge, fend, wrestle. Dodge, block, sidestep. So, just want to st stand up and stay alive skills. One thrower with accurate. And then two storm vermin, both with block, mighty blow. A lineman with kick, and then some rats. Uh, after that, three of them with wrestle. In total, 12 players. Whereas uh, the dwarves only have 11. Um, team value wise, despicable dwarves at 1510. Team ball steep at 1410. So uh, a 10k, uh, or rather 100k. Uh, team value difference there. Probably, would you, in that case, would you go for an extra apothecary or two, um, two blood wiser babes? Possibly a reroll? Don't know. I, th I think the apothecary. Because these dwarves are awful. They are. I'm pleased to see that the Skaven made it all the way to the end, though. That's really nice. And, oh. I was in the wrong place. There we go. So, the Spickle Dwarfs decide to receive. Meaning, the poor rats are going to have to do a defensive line. According to Petros, it took him seven games to get the Kick Rat. Uh, the Kick Rat has six SVP. Okay, so we'll probably see some exciting dwarf caging action here. And then uh, combo that with some exciting dwarf punch the rats action. But they only have two players in the backfield, so if they get a blitz here or actually fail to pick up the ball, um, then uh, the rats are probably just going to steal it and score. But starting with a kickoff return, runner runs back, and it's a very deep kick from Petros, which is kind of a smart move here because the dwarfs aren't that fast. Like, if you kick it deep, they can't really form a cage unless they form it on their own side of the pitch and quite far back. So far, Wrestle is doing a bit of work here. And Defender stumbles, attacker down. That's not going to help that poor rat. I'm still slightly annoyed that um, Blood Bowl Chaos Edition decided to call the Line Rats Line Man or Line Men. Just seems wrong. They're line rats. They're line rats. Line women's. Mm -hmm. Line rats. Mm -hmm. they're, I mean, they're zombos and skeletons, not undead linemen one and two. Exactly. Fleshy, li fleshy line man. Bony line man. Here that's comes. a that's a sad troll slayer. Uh, gets a push push into a fend. Mm hmm. That's not what you want if you're a troll slayer. You want to go like, oh, I'm frenzy. Nope. Okay, here we go. Runner's going to pick it up. And did so. Fine. Now the question is, can... We've got four wrestle, which is good because that ruins dwarves. Yes. Because basically they can stand up and they're like, oh, I'm really tired. I don't want to go any further. Let's have a look at this gut runner. Uh top right here gush uh, I can't get the thing to pop up for his movement now but one let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay so he can't reach meaning that probably most of the gush runners are actually out of range of this runner but we'll see it's gonna be interesting to see what happens because the 
since it was such a deep kick, the dwarves couldn't really cage up, so they instead done this horrible guard line where everything's shit if you're rats. It's just awful. It's just awful. Look at this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every single one of these dwarves is like strength 20. It's too strong. Just, too strong. You just got to walk away and go, nah, they're awful. Too bad they all have tackle for free. Yeah. And there's not a single guard on Petro's team, so... You, you can't even go like, ah, oh, look at me. I, too, can give assists. But d instead electing to move the gut runners around to try and block the runners, which I think, well, one gut runner so far, but it's a smart move. It means um, it's going to be difficult for the runners to connect up with the much stronger blocker line from the dwarves. Yeah, he's, he's forcing the dwarves to run around. So, but so far, pretty slow start just time-wise, but that's hardly, <laughs> like, of course it's going to be slow. We're door dealing with dwarves here. Oh, defender stumbles, defender stumbles. Kill that blitzer! Dealing with dwarves and a lot of guard, he's got to find the weakest link. Yeah. Let's see if Monstrous Manny goes down here. Nope. Oh. He but fell down, though. He, he fell down. Unfortunately, uh, the mighty blow from Pound Me didn't do a thing. Um. Okay, here comes another gutter runner just running around to try and... That's nice, trying to stop the dwarves from running back and help out. Uh, still no blitz has been used as of yet, so, like, it is possible that we'll see something like that, but most of the, like, it's hard to see what the, um, what the rats can do other than move, like, the gutter runners, they can move around pretty freely if they want to, but the rest of the team, not so much. Yeah, like, uh, not having dodge due to tackle isn't so bad, because there's still agility for. Hmm. Oh! Oh! Defender down, both down. Rassled. Very nice. Oh, wow, indeed. But then he followed up, blocking the path. Does he have movement? I think he needs to do GFIs if he wants to get out of this. Um, yeah. Nope, nope. He had enough movement, so that was that was a good move. And this line man can, if he wants to, try and block this blocker. But going to let the gutter runner through first. And... Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's, there we go. Oof, that's annoying if you're dwarfs. Uh, so that's um. Oh, attacker down, both down. That is not really what you want. But let's see. Yeah, because how was I? Have nothing. A reroll. Holy crap! Good. Good. Fuck that guy. Apo to dead. Good. Well. Things I've just got I've interesting. I've been more pleased to see a dead reroll to dead in my life. Yeah, like, I, 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 I try and not play favorites when I'm casting other people who play games. But all of that said, fuck dwarfs. And the uh, marking the runner with the the gutter runner isn't too bad because he's gonna get a two die block on you anyway, even yeah. if his friend comes along. Mm -hmm. Like even like, they're not gonna make it. Uh, and if they use blitz to get rid of the, this gutter runner, that means the uh, blocker line. Uh, that's on the LOS. Oh no! Oh, he fell over. Yeah. But it means that the block line on the LOS can't actually break through these gutter runners because if they want to make a hole to make it safe for the runners, they need to block one of the gutter runners. But if they do that, of course, then this gutter runner is staying put, which means that the runner stays put. This and, d defensive wrestle. Mm -hmm. And so that seems that to be what's going on nothing. here. Defender down, push. So this gutter runner is going to go down. Stays on the pitch, though, uh, which is lucky for him. But it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Asad Panda's dwarves do now. Because this gut runner, I mean, this runner can either dodge and run away, which is slightly danger dangerous. It's a 3+. Plus, and that's not really... Like, if, the, if he fails that, then the gut runner is going to pick the ball up and score. Which, like, Asad Panda knows that, so... He might instead just be trying to go for like, oh, well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna hurt the gut runners as much as possible, 
and just keep it safe here in the backfield. Um, that seems to be the case here. Both down, both down. That's not going to help. And do we have... Well, the Stripple Wrestle piece did get stunned last turn. So that's not happening. Uh, but there is a Fend Wrestle piece over here. They can probably do some work with the help of the Fap Gutter on her. Um, other than that, there are some rats still on the floor. Three of them, to be exact. Um, but still, like... Let's have a, look, a quick look here. Yeah, so... The doors are going to be down to ten... At least... Uh, a maximum of 10 players for the rest of the game, and that's one guard piece out. Granted, like, everyone else is a guard piece too, but slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. And a little pro tip for Petros here, or anyone else who wants to do a team like this. Uh, the question mark rather than the exclamation mark makes it much better. Moan? It's true. It's a, it's a very... that's a solid point. Right there? Bloosh? Oh, wow. Definitely better. I, If you wanted to, I guess you could throw in three uh, three uh, dots. Yeah. So it's like, sploosh. Found me. Oh, here we go. Defender stumbles. That's not going to be good enough because this runner has dodge. The only player on the team with dodge. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's now standing next to two gutter runners rather than the previous one. And the other runners stuck on this gutter runner. And the troll slayers are slowly but surely making their way down here. And that's probably pretty scary because they, while they don't have... Actually, one of them has tackle. The runner has mighty blow. But, uh, actually, let's see how many... How much fend do we have here? One fend. Okay. How's it going here in the back? The thrower's still able to do things if they want to, which means they can probably block this. Oh, I had Miss Grievous Gary, the plus strength guard blocker. It's awful. Awful. I want him to die next. Yes. Let's make a hit list. I've got one here. It's called uh, pa uh, Pandas Unscored Wolf Stop PNG. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Look at these weird dwarves. Here we go, another dodge. Oh, wow, has been doing pretty solid on the dodging so far. I think that was the piece that actually killed one of the blockers if I remember correctly. It might have been someone else, but this dude has wrestle, so good on him. No, it was Oh wow. So oh there we go. Uh nice. the rats playing a pretty high stakes game here with throwing some one die blocks, but then again they're pretty much forced to if they want to try and keep their players safe. And throwing a one die block when you have block is it's kind of safer than just dodging out. They also still have three rerolls. They got an extra one on the kickoff, if I remember correctly. Oh, and both down and a push. That's no fun if you're blocking a wrestle piece. But it is keeping the it is keeping the blockers stuck. Oh, here we go. Attacker down, both down. That's not good enough. Reroll to Defender Stumbles. That's uh, not That's fine. You got the tackle. Yeah. But then again, Fen doing a thing and the blocker can't follow up. Which probably... He probably... Actually, he might have been able to do a GFI if he really want. No, he couldn't have because then it would have been a dodge. So never mind. So this runner is still stuck here. Uh, def push, defender down. Okay. Let's see if he follows up. He did. Okay, that's that leaves that 
gives an opening to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so this knock the ball loose gutter runner here can definitely come down and uh, blitz the runner now. He probably has to do like a side push because there's some guard here. There's also another gutter runner here that can lend an exorcist if he wants it to die block. The problem is if he does that, then. Uh, well, actually, uh, this runner has sure hands, of course, so strip ball won't do a thing. But he can still do a two die block if he wants to against uh, with wrestle, which good stuff. So it might actually be better to just move this guy down to give an assist and then dodge out with the fend wrestle piece. But we'll see what happens. Uh, storm vermin and alignment here in the back still. No one's based this storm vermin, and he hasn't been able. He hasn't done much in well the second turn. Uh, but yeah, so they got Toronto dodging out here. That probably means we'll see Gush uh, run down and blitz, uh, which is fine because it actually, well, it kind of pushes him. And yeah, here we go. <gasps> Fell the GFI, re rolled both down, attacker down. That's enough. That's a bit tricky, though. It's not that harsh, but it is in a tackle zone, and to dodge there is going to be a 3 plus then to pick it up. Which uh, would be a three plus. Tackles, so. Yeah. But hey, more importantly, uh, the ball is actually loose, and dwarves aren't really that good at recovering balls. They're mostly like, yay, we caught it. Let's slowly wobble down the pitch and hold on to it. I think it's because they ate, eat too much bacon. Really greasy fingers. Okay, uh, so Storm Vermin running back here, trying to get some hurt on the Blitzer here up top. Uh, not doing much though, but at least pushing him around a bit. And it does mean that this Blitzer is probably, well, he's not going to dodge away. But this uh, next turn might hurt for the Uh We'll see. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Um, oh. Okay. Okay. Whoa! Okay. Okay. So that's a one on the uh, on the catch. Otherwise, smooth moves. Uh, it is currently in three tackle zones uh, for the dwarves. So it's going to be really hard to pick it up. The dwarves, however, might be able to do some kind of shame push here. Because they are on a line. And there are a lot of dwarves around. That said, there aren't that many dwarves with Agility 3. Currently only one. And he does not have that. He's attack her down and push. That's not going to remove... Uh, oh, he might be pushed onto the ball here. Uh, and if it scatters up... Nope. Okay. I probably would have pushed him onto the ball yeah, in this I think case. I, yeah, I think uh, I would have pushed him onto the ball too. Here comes a runner. He's fat and awful. And rolls defender down, defender down. And he's got tackle. But the run, the that piece has fanned, and now <laughs> it's got four freaking dwarves on it instead of three rats. Defender stumbles and a KO. So the dwarves kind of equalize. Even if he recovers the ball, is he going to be able to waddle all the way down the pitch in time? That's a very good question. Uh, there, there are like. He has two blitzers here at the top, and they do have agility three, so he might be able to do some weird ass, uh, like dwarf elf movement, uh, if he really wants to. There are like a lot of dwarves around this ball though, and the rats may very well be able to push someone into it and have it scatter somewhere. But to do that successfully, or rather to do that, and well, actually, it's going to be really hard unless you're a runner to catch it, because this is all agility too. But all he needs is a six, and, um, yeah. If someone does pick it up, then, oof, that's going to be annoying. But, I mean, it is possible you just move Moan over one square, and then... Uh, you stand up gush, 
and then you block the runner on one die. Then who knows what will happen. Yeah, who knows what mysteries await. Like, I think, like, there needs to be some kind of gamble here on pushing someone onto the ball because while the rats aren't going to be able to get enough tackle zones that the dwarves can't clear them off uh, next turn. And both of the blitzers are returning. It seems like the storm vermin are trying to keep them in check here. So moving some pieces down. The rats do have some pretty good like positioning here. Trying to keep out the faster pieces from getting in on the action. And like IB pointed out, even if they secure it on turn five, they are gonna have to run like really quickly to actually get it to the end zone if they if that's the plan. Both down, that is unfortunately not good enough. But yeah, you're not you're not gonna re-roll the safe block. Uh, he does still have a blitz he can use if he wants to. Um, oh, both down, defender down. That's another blocker down. That's nice. And, uh, hmm. Making him use up their awful movement standing up. Okay, here we go. Oh, two dice against. That's... That's okay. We'll see what, uh... Okay, wrestle. Yeah. So not moving the ball, but at least putting some extra pressure on it. Getting some more players knocked down. Um, this gut runner should probably, like, stand up at this point. Because, I mean, this piece has sidestep. So even if he gets knocked down, he can go stand, uh, oh dodging out that's ballsy because if that had failed then um no tackle stones on the ball but it seems like uh petros has shifted gears here and rather than trying to force a touchdown just make sure that the dwarves are going well not going to be able to score they have four turns they need to move it almost 20 squares possibly actually well, it's 26 and 22 squares to score on five turns. Um, and that's math. Math is very difficult. But that's five four to turns. <laughs> that's five to six squares per turn. And there aren't that many pieces that can do that. Like, uh, the runners, of course, can. But then a runner needs to pick it up and then just start running. And there are Skaven all around here being annoying. And they can't outrun the gutter runners even if they wanted to. Mm hmm. Oh. Unholy Ulrich did pick it up. So they're still. They now have the ball again. But he needs to get a move on somewhere. Uh, he, ha he has to do the pass to the Blitzel. Well, no, he doesn't. He Not can't. this turn. Yeah. Well, he's he does. have to. Not really. It's turn five, so he's got three turns after this. And if he keeps running, he can make it to the end zone. But the problem is, somewhere along the line, he's probably going to get blitzed by uh, some rats. As long as it, nothing gets in the way, he can make it just in a straight line. Just whoosh. But the, I think part of the problem is that these gut runners here can actually base Ulrich right now. Um, oh. Okay, so that's... That's a cage. It's a cage that can be opened. Um, but it is going to be slightly difficult to do so. They can move yeah. a storm vermin or a thrower down here to give an assist to... How wall side that can then push it back, and actually that's probably the best to. Yeah, there's all this awful guard. Move, move the thrower up to give an assist. Move the blitzer back one, and then run in with a storm woman for possibly a one die block, or uh, 
let's see. Is, do we have a wrestle piece somewhere around here? I don't know. They're really far away. So the dwarves did kind of recover there. Um, may, uh, managed to actually, uh, well, run up and uh, get the ball in motion again. The problem they're going to have next, though, is that uh, while the Troll Slayers, or rather, the runners are fast enough to run all the way, only the Troll Slayers and the Blitzers are kind of fast enough to actually get there. Like, to to keep keep up with the runner. Like, the Rats are always going to be able to keep up because they have movement 7, but the Blockers are going to fall behind, and they've already fallen behind. They're at the back of the cage. And they can only move four, four squares next turn forward. Uh, like they can GFI if they want to. Uh, but that's going to be some risky rolls. And instead for uh, blitzing the bolt carrier in one dive, uh, electing here to go for the safer uh, blitz with the uh, onto the blitzer and then just moving in. Um, I'm not like it's not a bad play. It's it's the safer play, but then again, these gut runners are probably going to swarm around the side of the cage as well, yeah, just to make it more difficult for the dwarves to go anywhere other than, like, straight up. Gonna clog it up. Like the bad toilet team they are. Exactly. What's going on Thursday? The cat's grumpy, as it should be on Friday Night Blood Bowl. Yeah. Let's see here, like, there are some holes in... <gasps> Defender down, attacker down. Boom. That blocker's not going anywhere because he's out of movement. He's done. Yep. He's done. Uh, let's. It's good. The gut runners do have to move somewhere though. But luckily, there's only a runner here. That's actually that's a runner with tackle. So that's actually not what you want to see. But there are three, two rerolls left for both teams. So some ones can be rolled. And now uh, Team Bold Sleep is down to one reroll. However, this cage is. Well, it looks Stuck. like it's going to have a hard time moving forward. I would describe it as mired. Mm. That, is, uh, that is a good word for what is happening right now, right here. Okay, that's a push and a both down. That's not good enough. That is not uh, what the dwarves need. Uh, they are gonna. They're not gonna reroll it though because they. Well, actually, they might have a. Yeah, they're gonna have a path here that they can move the runner forward. But if they do that, the blitzer here using a block. Like, there are three people that can follow this runner the blitzer, the troll slayer, and the troll slayer. And. We'll see if that's good enough, because this runner needs to move. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, not daring to go that far. That means he needs to traverse 13 uh, squares in the next two turns. He does not have enough normal movement for that, so that's at least one GFI. Yep, the one going for it between now and then. And once again, this blocker here, out of movement, falling behind even now. Uh, there are a bunch of actual free pieces here that the rats can move. So, like, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. I don't think this has been some solid blocking play from, from the rats so far. Um, putting pressure on the ball early, making sure that the girls are having a horrible time picking it up. And also, considering, like, because of this happening, it also means that the dwarves' actual, their main strength in their whole guard line is kind of, I'm not going to say negated, because of course it's not, uh, because they still have guard, but they actually kind of have to spread out and protect a runner, and when they do that, there are less people that can go like, hey, let me assist you with that. Because if they do, they use two people to uh, to block one rat, and that leaves more of them open. And that's, by the way, excellent. 
because that's Delinquent Dave, and I'm not sure how amazing he is, but he's got Mighty Blowing Guard. And that's one of the faster pieces removed. And the other one's down here, and he's not going to be able to keep up, so that leaves this Blitzer, this Runner, and possibly this Troll Slayer. That guy, <laughs> Fake Life points points out in the chat that personally, uh, he says, I think most people here are rooting for the rats. And I know that when I cast, I tend to root for, for the underdog. So that means once the rats, if the rats score and they actually go up a, a touchdown, I'm suddenly going to switch around and root for the dwarves instead. Here no. we go. Defender down, defender down. Pow. No, because you're not an inhuman monster. That's true, I'm not. Oh, that is not a fun um, fun scatter for the dwarves. And because rats are rats, that still means that the uh, Skaven can, if they want, if, well, they might be able to score this half. Mm -hmm. It is, however, looking pretty grim for the dwarves. Good. <laughs> See if the dwarves can recover this. Uh, the runner and the blitzer are both knocked down. So the runner now has nine movement and he can get four more. That leaves him at 13. So in theory, he can still do it. Um, this blitzer down to seven plus. Uh, so he's up to 11. So he can't actually score. Uh, this troll slayer still can. So maybe he should just. Get in there, pick it up, dodge through, and win the half. But what's probably going to happen is that the dwarves are going to try and stop the Skaven from scoring, ending the half 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh! They're actually... Putting some damage on the rats now. Yep, second KO of uh, the game for the so dwarfs. So they both have they both have two pieces out. However, I I think it should be mentioned that the uh, Skaven is probably uh, the the team that's actually better at playing with less players, like compared to the dwarves. The dwarves want all their players. The less players on the pitch, they are kind of like, uh, well, we're a bit shit on our own, so we can't do that much. The rats, as long as they have a getter runner or two, they can probably move the ball or try and steal it. I mean, it's unlikely, depending on the situation, but at least they have the movement and the agility to steal a ball if uh, opportunity arises. Which might be what's happening here, actually. Because the rats can at least remove one tackle zone from the ball. We'll see. And there is a gut runner that can probably pick it up and then do can it. Pick it up. Do a little pass. Do a little pass over all these uh, short men's heads. I don't think there's that much else you want to do. You might want to move the line rat at the bottom, stand him up, and run him up the pitch. But Petrus should be pretty happy with this because now he knows that the um, Dwarves cannot score um, this half. And since they elected to uh, receive, that's good news for the rats. 
There you go. Look at him. Wow. Wham. 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 It's a good sound effect. I like it. And now that. All right. Just runs down here. And uh, looks uh, at the, the end game. Zone. Possibly. Go on. Just stand in the corner. They literally cannot touch you. Yeah. Why? Are you, what are you waiting for? Just, just run move. down. Run down move. in the corner. They cannot stop you from stalling. No, but the blocker could maybe get the tackles on them. Yes, he could get the tackles on, that's true. If he manages to dodge out and to do two G fives. Oh sneaky. So the reason Pedro's moved to the left rather than the right is that this other gutter runner here is blocking the blocker because if the blocker wants to get over there, one, two, three, four. He still can for blitz, but he has to dodge through the gutter on his tackles on twice. Yeah. And, and if he wants now, to go around, then he can't make it. And now there's the thrower in the way too. <clears throat> oh, well. That blocker is really sad now. Good. He's finally re realized the awfulness of his existence as a dwarf. Oh, here he comes. Oh, he here he comes. comes. No. no. Oh, he's doing it. Oh, he did it. Holy shit. I decided to go for the gut runner that was not holding the ball down. Not as hard to uh, to make the dodging. Oh, <coughs> dear me. Okay. So the <coughs> the sploosh or, uh, or sploosh rather is going to have to do. It's probably going to dodge out uh, because it's the safest move to do, pretty much. I guess he could also blitz, uh, do a one die block with the gutter runner. Uh, but that's the same result. Actually, it's better because you could knock someone out. Uh, because this dude has wrestled. So even if it's both down, then um, the tackle zone disappears. So, just from a, like, oh, doing some extra blocking here first. Very fancy. Out for blood. Did yeah, not that, get yeah. Any blood, though. I don't like being out for blood here in this situation where he could yeah. possibly win the game. He, I think he should still. Yeah, there we go. He did the blitz. Nice mm -hmm. push. That's good enough. <clears throat> and there we go. The rat did it. Oh. Wow, he ran as far as he could. He ran right into the referee and the referee didn't like it. Nope. That's half time. That was... That half was more exciting than it had any right to be. Only thanks to big plays from the rats. Uh, unfortunately, the... Um that blocker's back, so uh, uh, the Dwarves team, down to 10 players. The Rats, still at full. Still at full. And now it's actually th their drive. It's going to be interesting to see if Petros decides to try and score quickly just to get the... Um, get to zero to make it even even harder for the dwarves or if he's going to try and stall it out a bit and have the dwarves come after him and then run around them if possible dead blocker nothing else and i mean this is good for the rats too because of the fact that um the doors are actually down. 
10 players. Um, a sad panda can't put up a like a full defensive line here. So there are there are gaps where you can blitz through and then have uh, as many gut runners as you like. Pretty much just run through and be like, hey, we're we're gut runners. Beep boop boop. That's not that's not what they sound like. But if they were robot gut runners, like the thrower, the thrower probably sounds like that. It's got pretty robotics. Much. This, however, is the weirdest offensive lineup I've seen. Well, it's that's not. I've, I've actually seen way worse. It's just very like spread out. Um, it looks like he doesn't really know where he wants to go, so everyone's open. But he should know where he wants to go at this point. That's uh, both down defender stumbles. That runner is. Well, it's knocked down because that's not the dodge one. There we go. Whew. That's a deep kick again, which it's a real deep kick. Which is really good for the rats because well it's gonna take the dwarves at least two turns to threaten this ball. If the rats deemed it like, nah, we don't wanna like we don't wanna do a thing, we're just gonna stay back and let you move. But uh Petra's here is moving pieces up, which means the dwarves are once again gonna have to split up, which I mean they prefer not to. Because if the rats manages to dodge away from them, then suddenly they have some pieces in the back. And they're like, but w w wait up. We're slow ass dwarves. So, three gut runners here in the back. This gut runner really far back. That's. Well, dwarves. They're slow. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here in the middle because there's only one line man. So, these blockers here can probably. Uh, if they really wanted to, they could easily just, you know, decide that now we, we are going gonna to block you down and then run forward. Storm Vermin moving over here just to cover the right side. And how was I just standing here being like, hey, I have tackle zones. I hear you don't like them. Hey, you don't like it to have to move around. I hear you don't know this thing called Doge. And uh, Wings of Destru is saying in chat that rats and elves are much more broken than dwarves, and I would disagree with that, but that's... Well, seeing, as, seeing as dwarves are actually literally broken in that their players cost less than they should for the stats and skills they have. Yeah, uh, that's true, but also, at, like, at some point, like, dwarves aren't overpowered in, in the sense that as, as soon as you come up against dwarves, you're going to lose. Uh, they do one thing, and they do that really well. And if you let them do that thing, then you're probably going to lose. 
which is why it's going pretty well for Petros right now, because he's managed so far to have the dwarves actually more adopt uh, the rats play style, which they are not good at because they are so slow. Yep. Um... And the like, uh, rats versus dwarves is uh, like the classic matchup of whoever gets to do their thing wins. Yeah, because it could definitely have gone the other way. We've seen games like that where uh, dwarves go up against rats and rats get destroyed because they've had to leave some players behind and the blockers pick one or two off and then they can't break through because all of the guard. But like, it's it's a it's a pretty fun matchup to watch, I think, just for that fact that you can... It's it's you a, it's to, going to be a lot about positioning. Yeah, and you get to see the skill of the players a lot. But Dwarves, uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, I typed it, uh, like their play is incredibly binary. They either do their thing and are really solid mm -hmm. and the best at it in the game and really tough to deal with, or they don't and they have literally no other option and they lose. Yeah. Like... The main strategy for dealing with dwarves is to run away from them. Um, it's not fun or cool. No. And, I mean, rats and elves are better at that than, say, Amazons. Because Amazons are kind of like, well, okay, we're up against dwarves. This is going to probably hurt. Dwarves against Amazon is the... just you like he, Unless you're a much better player than the other guy, you just fucking lose. Yeah, or Because, you get because your gimmick dice. is having dodge and all of his players just go, ah... Sorry, Dodge. It also, I mean, it also depends kind of when you when you play against the different uh, teams because they are like they are better at different team values. Uh, like this is a really solid uh, dwarf team for where they are. Like the fact that every blocker has guard that in itself is pretty amazing. And here we can see that the. Um, Back to the game, that the dwarves elected to... Well, we are just going to base the shit out of all of these gut runners. Uh, they are not threatening the ball at all. Which... Uh, so, so now we actually have the reverse of what we had like in the first half. In the sense that... Well, Skaven have five players on their own side of the pitch. Which is fine. But that also means they have... Let's see. They have five players on... The opponent side of the pitch, whereas the dwarves have like eight, ten, like every one of their players are back here, and since they have such slow movement, that means since all of them are back here, they are going to be able to cover wherever the rats wants to go, pretty much, unless the rats decide to do a really quick touchdown, which they should be able to do here. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah. So handing off to the scout runner here, uh, or actually passing to the scout runner, dodging out with this other scout runner, they can do a, if they wanted to, they could do a, um, a two turn touchdown here. Or they can do that and they can just have this scout runner run it all the way in. Uh, but that's not good enough because that's a push on that blocker. So that leaves a tackle zone on the gutter runner. And that is not what the rats wanted. Nope. Which means they might actually just leave it. Because there aren't any there aren't any pieces here that can actually reach this thrower. However, if they do decide to leave it, that also means that uh, the dwarves know what's up. And also, like, the whole argument of one team being better or worse than another one is kind of... Like... That's kind of how the game is designed. Oh, that's a... That, by the way, is a pretty ballsy play. And that he decided to stand next to the um, end zone here. Uh, let's see. Did he actually get to... No, he did not get to intercept that. So that's why. Uh, he's right there. Oh, and here we go. Is he going to go for it? He did. And yeah. there we go.
fist pumping. That's uh, that's pretty good for the rats. It's also uh, I'm, it's kind of okay for the dwarves in the sense that now at least they have a lot of turns to uh, to try and equalize, which which they still can um, if they if they work hard and eat their breakfast and whatever. All I want is for the extra rat player to have been uh, pouring sewer water in all the dwarves' beer while this is going on. Yeah. Let's see, do we have any... Are there any dwarven cheerleaders here standing on... Nope. No dwarven ale. It's been interesting to see what the dwarves do to counter this, uh, because in the first half they didn't really get to do an attack, in that the uh, the rats surrounded the ball carry or rather the runners really early and deep down the pitch, so they had to play recovery from the get go. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if they decide to do something different uh, this time around. But like I said, it's. It's looking... Oh, sweet. My... Is it? Is it? Oh, it's 10 o'clock. That's why that's apparently always happening. There we go. Came back. I don't know what, what happens at around 10, but my game always, like, freezes up for a second. Um... Yeah, so if, if they push hard down one side and manages to get some injuries, they can score in, well, they can score in three turns. Um, and then they can possibly do that again or get a blitz and tie it up. But, I mean, it's looking really good for the rats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the boop. The beep and the boop. Return that kickoff, fair maiden. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. Let's move that dwarf. Oh. High kick and kickoff return. Beautiful. That's, uh... The dwarfs should be really pleased with that. Mm -hmm. Don't have to run around picking up the ball, they're just there, boom. Yeah. And that guy fell down. Mm -hmm. Not getting any uh, any casualties as of yet. Oh, well, there we go. A KO. That's an okay start. They have, however, opened up uh, the back to, uh, to the rats to run in. I like to go straight down the middle here. Um, I'm not sure. Like, of course, it's not like he couldn't really because of the way this is set up. They couldn't really go very much in on either side. But by going in the middle, the doors have essentially decided that we're just gonna have to plow our way through. Which is a fine dwarf play, unless you only got six turns to score two touchdowns. Which is rough for the dwarves. Yeah. Because they're slow and poop. So the rats are going to do uh, the same thing they did last turn, and that seems to be basing at least a few of uh, the players. That's an attacker down. Now this is going probably going to work really well for the rats, because the runners are they are still pretty okay at dodging with Agility 3. It's just that you kind of don't want to dodge with dwarves regardless, because they're fucking dwarves. And Agility 3 is kind of unreliable. Yeah. 
And let's see, is this... Oh, this is a sidestep cutter on her. That's not... Uh, then you can't actually do a chain push here. Otherwise, a chain push would have been pretty simple to do. Uh, but unfortunately, not this time. And that probably makes the dodge here all the more likely when it's the dwarf's turn. Because they can't clear this out, so they might as well like dodge and run forward. sneaky rat. Yeah, moving into the middle here. Um, that means that this um, this troll stage is actually open. Oh. Like, the doors might actually be able to break through here. If they play their cards right. And make the dodge. That is, as they say, the tricky bit. Look at this sneaky little man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh! Using a reroll to get away from the doors. And then going next to a different dwarf? What? I think you're slightly ahead of me. What time are you at? Uh, 3.50... Like, 5 off dwarf turn. I'm... Oh, yeah, you are way ahead of me. Uh, just pause a bit and I'll tell you when you get there. Because I'm at okay. 3.52 right now. Okay, I'll pause at 3.40. Okay. Live syncing here. Um, okay, 43, 42... 41, 40. Hell yeah. There we go. Okay. So, uh, they managed to stun some rats while we were away. Um, okay, so... Moving the... I'm not sure what's happening here. Because... Attack her down, reroll into a push. Is he chain pushing the guy forward? Yeah, he is. That's some sneaky dwarf shit. I but hate it. Like, I'm not entirely sure why, because now he left most most of his backup oh, behind him. Yeah. It's a good idea though. Yeah, like it, it's it's a fine it's a fine play. It's just not a fine play. This when you need to move dodging. more more squares here, because he only managed to he moved two squares up, um, which means he can score on. Well, he can score on turn thirteen if he if he spends the next two turns running, but I don't think the rats are going to let him do that. If I'm honest. Because now there are a lot of dwarves around. Like, there are four dwarves to three rats here. Which isn't great. Because they're pretty sure they're even on players. <coughs> boop, 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 boop. Defender stumbles, attacker down. But that is two dice again. Yeah, that's why he's re-rolled. We don't like to see what he got Push hit. both down. And that's going to be a push because that dude has wrestle. Uh, yeah, and even a push is enough to ruin the dwarf's life because every square is precious. Yeah. He can st he can still do it in, in two turns. Um, but he, like I said, he needs to get a freaking move on. Hmm. 
Oh, block, block, bonk, bonk. See, this is like it's it's going less super great for the rats night right now, and that's because they are kind of forced to play uh, dwarf ball because they kind of need to block people down or at least try to, and they are just not as good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, then again, they have managed to do the important stuff like pushing this uh, runner back. Basing another piece. Let's see if you can get a move on here. Because currently, most of the pieces that are actually mm, like movable are the gutter runners. And we did see in the first half that they aren't that great at actually knocking the ball loose. At least not from... Uh, unholy Eric, because he's got blodge and sh uh, short hands. And here we go, two player, uh, two rats facing him again. That's really good. Uh, he still kind of has to dodge away, probably. Um, he can probably, actually, he can probably, m most certainly, Shane push these two dudes away, assuming he knocks down this uh, thrower. Because all he needs is to like a blocker to stand over here and give guard, and then he can just go poop. Oh, there goes another. That uh, that's a dead uh, storm vermin. Rip. And that's not a dead gutter runner. His name. Is his name was here. Pound Me. Yep. And they did. Yep. Okay, there are a lot of blockers here that are pushing this storm vermin around. Yeah, so now we're probably going to see this blitzer. Yeah, chain push. Defender down, that's fine. That leaves the runner and a troll slayer free to uh, get a move on. If they want to, which honestly they probably should. He can, he can score two turns. Mm -hmm. Going for it. No, don't don't stop moving. Uh, he needs another going for it. He needs one going for it. Yep. Okay, so uh, I think the main reason he decided to not stop uh, moving is because he's standing next to a guard piece here. Which means that the gut turners, when they blitz him, are, well, they're not going to be able to get it. It's going to be a two-die block against. They don't have any guards, so they can't actually deal with this piece. In theory, of course, they could uh, try and use this wrestle. Well, actually, they can't because there's... Uh, the only square to attack from is this square here. Uh, with the... If you manage to get a strength three piece down here, you could do a one-die block. On unholy Ulrich. You should just scream now. Should just scream. That too. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does here. He can, of course, instead of trying to get the ball, he can just make another like. Um, like a defensive line. You can just try and screen the dwarves out because the dwarf still needs one GFI to get down here. And if you put pieces here and here, uh, like two squares ahead of the dwarf, he's going to have to either dodge or like go around them, which is going to waste his movement. Okay, so... Nope. Still a two die against Blitz. <coughs> Unless you use... No, that's a Gutter, uh, gutter Runner 2. Gutter Runner is all over the place. And it's a push.
but that's in theory that's okay uh, because, well he doesn't have anyone that actually has enough movement to chain push this guy forward Okay, now I think he actually can chain push. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, now he can chain push. Um, oh, never mind. That's a sidestepper. Oops. But he can actually. It like it's a. It's a two die here, and then a. Oh, that's a, okay. He can still do it, possibly. Oh, that's a failed dodge. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oh. I did not expect that block, but good. Badly hurt. Oh, and now he can do this chain push here, I think. One, two, three. No, well, he, he still can't because sidestep. Um, excellent. H however, had he not followed up here, he, uh, this dwarf would have had a, st well, he probably wouldn't have had to be able to dodge into those tackles on anyways but uh I'm not sure why this is happening anger could be like it like you can still hmm. yeah okay yes so there we go. Now, uh, this Troll Slayer here can, uh, does he have tackle? Yeah, he does. There we cool. go. Yeah. Mm, bop. Oh, no. Good move. Really good move, my Petros. Now, because of the way this piece is stuck, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, he can't actually score a touchdown mm -hmm. this turn mm -hmm. because of that. And, I mean, the Troll Slayer... He had to follow up. Because he's got a frenzy. That yeah. was excellent. Oh. He realizes. Yep. Let's have a look at the injuries so far. Two rats. Well, three rats are out. Feels like more, but that's because both of them, most of them are lying down right now. It is going to be tri uh, extremely tricky to score, uh, to steal the ball and score in two turns for the dwarfs, though. Uh, so, yeah, like, on, on that one, um, that one side fallen set. rat. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, this kind of, like, here shows how important your positioning is mm -hmm. in Blood Bowl, because sometimes mm -hmm. if you can just block one square, then the other player's boned. And that's also why, I realized why he decided to, like, it was safer to stand next to the guard piece. Which it definitely was, um, but if he'd moved one st more step uh, further step forward, he probably the um, Pedro's probably couldn't have had, uh, stopped him from actually being in scoring range. And here we go. Both down. Is that good enough? Yes, it Rassled. is. Wrestled. But hey, this troll slayer's in scoring position. All he's got to do is pick it up, yep. get that man to the troll slayer, and he can walk it in. Actually, this uh, this uh, runner here. No, never mind. One, two, three. He's definitely on the scoring position. Oh. 
And here comes the tackle. Where's it gonna go? Not on the ball. Not on the ball. Get it. Get it. Get it, little man. Oh, actually, speaking of little men, Infernal Ian can, if he manages to pick the, uh, catch the ball, could have actually scored. But it wasn't to be, I guess. Like, there are some high-risk maneuvers that could have could have been done to make the dwarves score earlier. But at the same time, like you're playing against rats, and you kind of you. If more rats get hurt, you're feeling pretty good about yourself because then it's easier to steal like that. Boop. 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 Uh, and uh, Unholy Ulrich still has the ball. Unfortunately, it seems like he's going to be scoring on turn 14. Now, in theory, that's still fine. Because he can... He could roll a blitz, run in, pick it up, and then tie on turn 16. If he scored with Frank, Frank would level up. Frank, the troll slayer. Yeah. Hmm. So right now I'm just waiting for a move so I have something to comment on. But, like, remember most games where, um, oh, there we go. He fell down too. He fell down. It's an awful lot of rat blood on the pitch. I was going to say there aren't that much rat, there aren't that much blood on the pitch, considering the players. Can't drink the ball, idiot. Typical. Okay. One dead dwarf. One dead rat. Two barrels filled with sewer water. Yum, 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 yum. One dead rat, two hurt rats. KO rat, fine. Okay, so... They each have one last turn so far. Um, basically, what I'm hoping to see from the dwarves is an all-out attack. Because it doesn't actually matter if you lose 3-1 or... Uh, one, two. Like, just, just, just get over there. And that seems to be what's happening. Um, trying to get as much movement as possible out of these, um, out of these slow ass folk. On the flip side, though, like, holy shit, would it be annoying for Patrols if a blitz actually happened? Mm hmm. So, let's go with that. I mean, so... Currently, he has... Uh, Sad Panda has two outs. And that's Riot and Blitz. Uh, because they both give him... One more turn. And he needs one more turn if he wants to tie the game up. If something else happens, then... Petros has won this. Spoilers. Uh, or, well, not spoilers, but we'll see on the kick-up results. And I, I really want it to be either of those two results. So, let's see what happens. Oh, Perfect defense. Perfect. Defense. There's no need for perfection now. They couldn't get it done. So, even though I switched around and I'm now sharing for the dwarves, um, because underdogs, really well played by Patron's Rats. Uh, going up against um, 
going up against a solid dwarf team like this and being able to come out 2-1, that's really good. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, really well played from both teams, but I feel like uh, the positioning in the first half really helped Petros out, being able to um, and pressure the dwarves so much that they didn't feel they could be safely move up to score. Uh, Completely stopped the ball in the dwarf heart half yeah. like right at the start a very nice rat play so don't ever say dwarfs are overpowered because rats i guess oh snake guide on the shore hands but i don't think it's gonna matter much and um we'll see if a sand pattern no I like to do the nice thing and not going for any like SVPs. There weren't that many to be had anyways. So let's escape out of this game and see uh, the stats. 720, yeah. that's fine. Like, you get, just look at the stats that I think is the most telling is the door still had 66% ball possession, uh, whereas the Skaven only had 24 and they still won 2 1. Mm hmm. Um, who got the MVP then? Hellish Harry. Like it was sixty forty in terms of whose half the ball was in. Mhm. Mm but sixty six twenty four in terms of who was holding the ball. The so dwarves that, had it and could not escape. So that means Petro's Skaven team, team balls deep, won a season four of the demo bowl. Yay. Yay! Yay! Goodbye, YouTube! Yay! Wow, I'm, I'm sounding Yay. really excited, I just realized. That was a good game, though. That was a good game. GG, well played. Mm -hmm. Everyone. I enjoyed